the governor of the free state of Florida, he recently received some incoming bullying from Disney Corporation about what I guess they dubbed the Don't Say Gay Bill. And what had happened is a bunch of parents and people got together and they passed a law or were working on getting a law passed that prevents kindergartners from to third graders from being taught sexual orientation, sexuality, gender identity, and all that stuff. His parents were like, they're kids. Let them be kids. And so obviously everybody in the media industrial complex, if you will, says, oh, they're going after, uh, you can't say, don't say gay. And so they misrepresent what the bill is really about or what the intent is. And so Disney figures, hey, we're, we're spending all this money in the state of Florida. And so we're gonna, I'm going to pick up the phone and call Governor DeSantis and hopefully he'll back down and not support this legislation. And what I like about Governor Sanis is that he he stands up for what he believes in. He doesn't care. He's not going to be bullied by woke people or being called names. He's going to do what he feels is right. And he explains himself. So here his quote is, is that he says, the chance that I'm going to back down on my commitment to students, and back down from my commitment to parents' rights, simply because of fraudulent media narratives or pressure from woke corporations, the chances of that are zero. So it continues on Thursday after a call from Disney CEO Bob Chapek that activist shareholders forced as a result of a protest, DeSantis stood up to woke cancel culture. Refusing to bow to pressure by radicals, DeSantis defended the new anti-grooming bill mislabeled as the Don't Say Gay bill by the activist media who carry water for the left and said, here's what I can tell you. In the state of Florida, we are not going to allow them to inject transgenderism into kindergartners. The majority of people who actually have children that are raising them don't want this stuff imposed on their children in kindergarten through third grade. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I didn't take health and sexuality. I think it was sixth grade was when I had a health class. I think we had two two whole weeks on it and that was it but trying to get into all these the gender ideology and that stuff with kindergartners it's i can understand the parents don't want it being taught i don't know what they're teaching and i haven't read the bill so i can't get too confident and like charge in with a huge argument here but i will say that the title alone of the bill is divisive <laughs> we don't say gay bill? bill could they have come up with something a little more but that's more not like... the title of the bill oh, okay what that is it that was the label that oh, is the that Democrats what media is calling it, yes. it? Okay. so that's what they do is they come up and they create a name and they repeat it over and over what's the name of the bill I it's think a it's house bill 1577 oh it doesn't have a name it's just a number <laughs> okay but you know this is interesting. May, may I read it? Yes, I would okay. like to hear an yes. actual content of this bill. This bill is a, a seven-page document, and the part that's getting all the hype, all the attention, is only four lines of text. Okay. And this is what it says. And then, and then, what we need to do is talk about a couple of these words and what they mean. Classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in, let me see if I can get to the next page, in accordance with state standards. That's it. That's the paragraph, the four lines of text that people are irate about. And the key words being, and it, it doesn't say, you know, I mean, we can, we can also say it's the don't say straight bill mm -hmm. for, for that matter. But the, the key words are on sexual orientation or gender identity. And I think the most important word to identify is sexual orientation. And what is that? And what does it mean? You're not sexual up till third grade. You're not even sexual. Yeah, I get that. I mean, we have a hard enough time having a discussion among you know intelligent adults mm -hmm. on this on on well the thing is is like the you know the gay constituency is upset that they're basically making it illegal to talk about gender 
ideology and sexuality from kindergarten to third grade. And the gay contingency wants to be able to teach their ideology, if you will, or their sexual views to people's kids that are, quite frankly, are too young to understand this stuff. And at the end of the day, the children belong to the parents, not to the small constituency of the gay community that wants to teach this ideology. I don't really know that anyone's um, licensed to teach this. I don't know that anyone's really taken uh, education in this area where they've graduated with the ability, special knowledge to teach this. And, you know, I think back of an employee that I had, a man married to another man. And I remember when he was disgusted about when he would go to, if he went to a, a gay bar, people would try to hit on him and his husband and they were, you know, monogamous. But we, in the, in the places they were going, not everyone was monogamous. Okay, well, are we talking about sexual orientation from a gay monogamous or a gay polyamorous perspective? There's, you know, even if you were going to cover this, how are we going to appease the gay population? Because there's going to be division there. And if we're going to talk about, you know, gay orientation, are we going to get into polyamorous orientation or other sexual orientations? Mm -hmm. You know, how far do we go? You're going to find something that everyone disagrees with if we do go forward. And then you have to also say, well, let's say that it's being taught. We allow this kind of discussion. Who's it going to be taught by? What percentage of the teachers are gay? Chances are it's going to come from a straight perspective. It might even come from a, a, a churchy perspective, maybe a Christian perspective or a, a Jewish perspective or a scriptural perspective or a Muslim perspective. You know, do you want your kids being taught from those people? It just opens up a big can of worms for mm -hmm. kids that are too young to understand what we're talking about anyway. Yeah, I, I remember <clears throat> when my daughter was in first grade, um, a new student was introduced to the classroom and I went home to my husband. I'm like, oh, there's a new kid in class. He's a gay kid. My husband looked at me and said, how do you know he's gay? They're in, he's in first grade. I'm like, well, I just know. I mean, I grew up around gay people. I, I know. And he was just like shocked by that. And um, I was friends with the mother and we never discussed it because first graders are not sexual. <laughs> we waited until he was later, you know, older to even bring it up because you don't want to label, you you can know, you can see the signs of somebody who identifies a certain way. And that's, no, that's not a teacher's business to discuss at all. So I don't even understand why this is an issue or why they're making a bill about it. Is this something that was being taught in school? Well, what's happening in some of the states, especially with the gender stuff and teaching that, is that they're the people in the school system, the teachers, the administrators are mm -hmm. getting in between the parents and their children because the, the children might become convinced once they study this stuff in school that they're trans or whatever. And so they, they decide they want to identify as a different gender, but their parents don't approve of it. And because they're minors, at the end of the day, they're the, the kids, the children belong to the parents. And so what's happening is the school administrators are going, okay, well, we just won't tell your parents. We'll keep this from them. And so what happens is like there was one recently, I was, I was reading a story about it, where it was, um, I think it was a girl who had transitioned to a boy and the, the mother didn't approve. She was more traditional or religious Christian background. And so they, the teachers and the administrators got in between you know, because they, they didn't agree to this. And so they were able to get the child, basically child protective services, to take the child away from the parents. And then the the people involved, the administrators, and enabled the child to go and start getting surgeries and hormones and things of this nature. And then the child later wanted to detransition and decided that they 
had made a mistake, but she couldn't talk to her mom anymore because the state had basically taken her away. And so now they've, the, these people have destroyed the relationship between the parent and the child. And then the child was already messed up with gender dysphoria, you know, whatever, and ends up committing suicide. Yes. And so the parent is like, these people at school convinced my daughter that she was a boy. And basically I lost my parental rights. And then later she decided that she wanted to transition back and I couldn't even be involved in her life. They literally, this woman lost control of her child and it ended in her child's suicide. Yeah. And so you, you know, that is a, you know, anybody that studies it, it's a confusing issue. I, would, I wouldn't want to be somebody with gender dysphoria and it's very tough for them. Obviously you, I know, you know, kids that have gone, gone through that, but you know, in cases like that, the extreme cases where the States have come in and basically written legislation where if the parents don't go along with it, the people in the school system can go to the legal system and get the children taken away and then get in between that. And then the kids can start going, getting top surgery and getting on hormones and stuff when they're still young and still developing. And then, you know, some of them later on decide to detransition. And by then, you know, they've often messed up their bodies and they've done irreparable medical procedures on them that you can't go back from. Yeah, and that, so that is what this bill is about. Yeah. It's about the parents' right to information that the teachers might have about their children and how that should be communicated to them. It's uh it's you know about not keeping the parents in the dark about what's happening at school. And except for those, you know, four, four and a half lines of text that address gender identity and sexual orientation. So teachers are not allowed to address anybody's sexual orientation or identity, gender identity. Kindergartners are third grade. And during that age span. Yep. Fourth grade's open season. Like, <laughs> is, it really, is this really a bargaining thing? And it's kind of ridiculous. Like, they are eight years old by then, right? Yeah, it's like, Jesus Christ. What's the but at the end of the day, fourth grade, it, like, when you got young kids that don't know any better and they're looking up to not only their parents as people of authority, but people in the school system, and I mean, think about it. There are things that you wouldn't want to be taught to your children. There's ideologies out there that you wouldn't want taught to your kids. And this just happens to be one of those things where the parents are like, I don't want my little kids that don't even understand anything about sex being told by kindergarten teachers what they should and shouldn't do. And, you know, teaching them all, all the stuff about all the different pronouns and the genders and it's like it's absurd they don't want it and at the end of the day the, the so it's like you kind of have a battle between the parents whose children they are and the people in government and the teaching system who believe that the state should be the ultimate governing authority and that the state should override the parents interests and there are states that have gone that way and passed laws and in that particular case, that woman lost her daughter to people that got in the way and used the legal system to get in between the relationship between her and her daughter when she really needed her, and it cost her her life. What's the accountability for those people? Why did they, Why is the cutoff third grade? I wonder like what the reasoning is behind that. I don't know where that came into play, but I do recall watching on the news and someone said if they're old enough to ask, they're old enough for an answer. Or maybe and, old enough for like to, for women girls to menstruate, maybe like I'm just trying to figure out third grade. Well, they're also doing things like encouraging, you know, in the curriculum that they've seen in these different programs, they're encouraging kids to masturbate, and it's great and it's healthy. And again, if you're sending your your kindergarten or your five year old off, you, you probably don't in kindergarten or second or or even first grade want your kids being taught all about masturbation and sex toys and stuff like that when they're that young. And so this, these are the types of things that are in the curriculum. Where a better answer might be, you should talk to your parents about that. Done, end of story. Yeah, and we could go down a rabbit trail with this. Like imagine the kids did ask the question, you know, where do babies come from? 
And, and you, you know, well, okay. And we go down that discussion and, you know, uh, mother and father come together and, well, what does that mean? And you go into detail because they asked if they're old enough to ask, they're old enough for an answer, right? And then, you know, Johnny says, but I have two daddies. How does that work? Well, they don't, you know, they can still have fun, but they can't actually make babies. What do you mean they can have fun? You know, where do you stop answering the questions? especially that age, it makes sense, you know, especially if it's my children, please send them to me. I think yeah. I can handle that discussion with them and teach them in a very appropriate way and in a sensitive way. Mm -hmm. It's just a really weird bill. I don't, I don't understand where, like, is this common? It shouldn't ha even have to be a bill. You know, the, there should be enough <laughs> yeah, common sense. The teachers should have enough common sense, uh, you know, it, and, and the, the opposition will say, but school is a safe place. School is not a safe place. It's never been you know, a safe place. <laughs> well, the other thing, it, you know, you got these videos of these teachers, the elementary school teachers, and they're they're gay, they're trans, they're lesbian, and they're talking about how they're so proud that they came out to their students and told them what their sexuality was or their sexual choices. And it's like at the end of the day, why are adults that are teaching elementary school school kids wanting to involve their kids in their sexual orientation their sex life or the choices they've made for their family for their families and it's like you can see these videos of these teachers and what happens is they go and and what the argument a lot of people are making is that they're grooming children and some you know what's interesting is like you look at stats there's been a lot of pedophiles in the school system i mean look how many women end up i don't know what it is but it's like a lot of women are hooking up with dudes in in high school and multiple guys, married women. It's like that 20 years ago, it was like you had one. And now it's like dozens and dozens of there's, you know, because we look through these articles, it, it happens a lot. And are you talking about women or teachers with their students? Teachers. And a lot of them are women. That's right. always happened. It happened when Not I was in high school. Not on the level where we've seen it now. I think that social Did you go media... to school where some of your friends were banging teachers? Mm-hmm. I didn't ha not that that didn't happen in my high school. I didn't and and when that. I went to college, my college friends told me about it too. I think yeah, it's well, they're adults then. But this this is happening no, where no, you got no, no. No, women hooking up with in kids school. in middle school, boys in middle school, and and get knocked up by them. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know how common that is, though. Yeah, but the point it's not a safe place but exactly, and so parents are looking at this going. Why is this person in their early 20s who just got out of college wanting to talk to my elementary school kids about sex and sexuality? It's that's kind of weird. And yeah, I don't age, think it's appropriate. I don't know why that's part of that wouldn't be part of the curriculum. So, like I said, these teachers do this and then they get caught and then there's a big outrage because the, the videos go viral on Twitter and then they end up getting suspended and then later fired. And then some of them even later turn out to be have child porn on their computer and stuff Okay, like so that. they're passing this bill to prevent lawsuits and stuff down the line, maybe? Well, they're worried about pedophilia also. I mean, you just had 100 people arrested for sex trafficking in Polk County, and several of them work at Disney. It's yeah. A, there's a lot of that going on in the country. And so when parents, like I said, it's... I, if it was me, I had kids that were that young. I'm, I don't want these teachers talking about all these things to a, a kindergartner or a first grader or a second grader. It's not appropriate. Yeah, it is not a don't and say. If it's my child. Though. I get to decide. Yeah, and the kids can talk all they want, and they can use the word gay, and they can talk about it. But parents are just supposed to say, "That's something you should ask yeah, your parents about." Yeah, That's yeah. all. And the media blew it out of proportion so much that everyone got fired up. What, they can't say gay? You know, you're against us for being gay and you know, the world's against us. It's not like that. I think that's the problem. No one's actually read into it. Yeah. Did any research into it. They just hear these talking points and choose sides, spears drawn. Well, it's the school boards basically decide what the curriculum is. And so what's happening is because people, you know, nobody really, who pays attention? Do you even know who's on your school board? I mean, when your I kids were in school. kids in school. So. Well, I mean, nobody paid attention at that level. And so you get people getting elected to the school board will oftentimes have no kids. And they're the ones that are deciding the stuff that's being taught to children. And the parents, you know, especially when it all started with the lockdowns and hearing the Zoom calls and hearing the things the teachers were saying. And they're like, man, I've never heard anything like that when I was their age. And 
and stuff in school. And so they're mortified by it. And so they started pushing back. And you could see there's countless videos where the parents go to these school board meetings and the, the people in the school board are just arrogant and condescending. And I'm, I'm the school board member and you don't really have any say and I'm going to decide what we decide to teach the kids. You don't like it, you can go vote. I mean, they're just, they have the attitude that they have the power over people's children. And a lot of them have no children of their own. And they're like little tyrants. And, you know, parents are running them out of the school boards, either through elections or in some of the communities that are smaller, they're able to, to get enough people in the community together, vote, and f- basically fire all the people on the school board, have a new election right on the spot, and elect members of the, the parents to take over the school boards. These are some of the real small communities. I think the outrage is because parents that have <clears throat> gay children want their teachers to be aware of their child being gay and being able to have a, a safety, a, a, I don't know, like a, because a, a teacher is a stand in parent for all those hours they're in school. So if I had a gay child and you know, by first, second, third grade, for sure, if your kid is gay, usually, but um, they might not know. Um, yeah, they're not sexual in nature yet. So this is not something that your child t- necessarily talks to you about, but you know, as a parent, so why are they trying to teach well, them? In, yeah, teaching. Exactly. I don't think this is a curriculum thing. I think this is about having conversations with the yeah, child. See, I can tell Jen's attitude is like it's not happening. She doesn't believe it at all. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to admit when I was in like second or third grade, I thought girls were gross. Yeah, I didn't know better. <laughs> you know, that's how I, and I'm just saying that I don't really remember the, the You're time, but, but, in but as a, as a, as a boy, you know, it's kind of like, Oh, I just want to hang out with my guy friends, um, mm-hmm. at that age. And then, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, okay. Seventh grade, you know, um, boys start changing and their interests change and stuff. And they start deciding who they are, their hormones kick and they start deciding who they are. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, people don't, question whether or not they're gay at that age they might but i don't think they're really struggling with it and need counseling but if they are okay let's have something in place for them let's have online classes that are available that the parents can screen and and show and help their kids and say you know here this is you know i want you to have this information it's okay and to, to you know but let that be up to the parents and let them be able to preview the material and show it to them let it be you know something that is accessible by parents online if they want their kids to have that special education it should be up to the parents but i do think that it's okay to have an lgbt club in high school um and let those kids find their people because they're very vulnerable at that time but it doesn't have to be part of the curriculum though Teaching it and accepting it is two separate things. I don't believe it should be part of the curriculum. Um, I think that it should be able to be discussed, but not taught. I don't think enough. I, I hear you. And I like your idea of the parents being able to communicate with the teachers on this topic, more so than the teachers Community. The, the other thing that's interesting about the teachers is they also go, you, you see them all the time. Right? Like, so there'll be a bunch of teachers that this bill will get passed and there'll be teachers in Florida and they'll go on TikTok and they'll go, I'm going to teach it anyways. I don't care. And they'll say that and then they'll get caught and then they get fired because they're seeing it happen a bunch. And these people are just kind of stupid, some of them. And they're, you know, the laws have passed and they're basically publicly saying on a public social media that they're not going to follow the law. And they're going to do what they feel is right anyways, even if it's against the law. And then those teachers get fired. Yeah. It's too slippery of a slope. You know, uh, one of the things we were talking Reading, about. Reading, writing, arithmetic, teach my kid to spell yeah. basic math, do some basic functions. I, I don't want them indoctrinated to, to your religion or your ideology or whatever. Tell them the basics of the country, Americanism, where we came from. Just the basics. And all this other stuff, people should be a certain way or dress a certain way. Their sexual orientation should be a certain way. It's like that's between the the parents have the right to teach the kids the values they want. If they're Muslim, the parents want to be able to teach their kids the Muslim values. If they're Christian, they want to be able to teach their kids the Christian values. If they're more spiritually open and flexible, kind of like you are, then I'm sure you want the rights to teach your kids 
but you want to teach them without the government or the school getting in the way of your relationship with your children and overriding you. 